welcome to the session once again so as we were talking about you know the various factors in selecting the location many times you have to see the economic fluctuations also uh, which are prevailing in that particular country there are social factors there are security factors also nowadays if there is a threat from terrorism if there are terror attacks so <clears throat> for any multinational company it will be difficult to select that location countries like afghanistan pakistan where are there are reports of terrorism recently sudan so nigeria so these countries deter any foreign company to set up their business base over there so security aspects have also to be taken into consideration then you have to see if somebody is if a multinational company is setting up its business facilities in a country it also has to see what is the exchange rate fluctuations of the currency of that country so that is also important from the international point of view then they also see what is the policy of that country with respect to investment policy with respect to what is their policy for foreign direct investment fdi foreign institutional investors foreign portfolio investors etc then uh, one has to also see uh, in the global context what is the comparative advantage uh, in that particular country uh, what is the market from the now this is from the international perspective that is why you see in india lot of countries want to come in country like india because of the huge population because there is a very huge markets then one has to also see whether there are any language or cultural differences so if there are any language or cultural differences Uh, the company the organization has to adapt to the culture of that country so it has to select the employees uh, <clears throat> who can adapt to that country's culture and it has to make its product which uh, adapt to the country's culture so you have to understand the legal systems of that country for a multinational company and if there are any import restrictions are there or not so those things also have to be taken into consideration then quality of services uh, again in the global context the availability the law and order situation availability of means of transport this we have already discussed the quality of life so uh, today even if it is a domestic organization or a foreign organization they also want to see what is the quality of the life for their people over there so political factors uh, we, we were just talking earlier also political factors like political stability what is the political ideology of the current government in that particular region in that particular area in that particular country in that particular state is also of utmost important so similarly tax laws tax incentives what are the fixed cost overhead cost what are the distribution costs over there what is was the climate external factors skills uh, revenue focused demographics so demographics of a region is also very important so demographics of a place is very important in deciding a location if you see the second part of this slide so for example if you are planning to open a high end brand then the service location has to be chosen on income taste age of the people so democratic fix means the age of the people the income of the people the education level of the people etc so that plays a very important role so uh, therefore uh, traffic volume patterns customer access parking areas uh, <clears throat> if suppose you want to set up a showroom you want to set up a hospital you today you have to see the parking area also if the parking area is not available you will not get the right kind of people over there so for example if you see on this slide we are saying traffic volume or pattern so markets with high volume of people and high volume of patterns for high revenues then customer access or parking if the car parking or access to the service location is easy it will attract large volumes of people for example nowadays people prefer shopping in malls due to easy accessibility and convenient parking so these are some of the things which are common sense 
but uh, sometimes people forget the, these things. So, the, then uh, their operations are not successful and ultimately the businesses are not successful. So, now let us see the location selection on the basis of the uh, some scientific methods. So, if we see on this slide location selection it is based on subjective factors. So, number one there are various methods. Uh, one is the equal weight method, variable weight method, weight come rating method, factor point rating method. Then based on cost there is a production cost method which is break even analysis and there are transportation cost methods. So, under this there are methods called median model, gravity model and transportation model. In today's lecture we will try to cover some of these methods and then uh, we will cover the other methods in other lectures. So, let us see the first method which is equal weight method. So, uh, if we see on this slide there is a chart. So, we have four sites over here in, in a practical situation let us say an organization has got a choice of four sites S1, S2, site number 3 S3, site number 4 S4. Out of these four sites uh, this organization want to select one. Let us say they have uh, shortlisted three main factors. So, factors are factor number 1 that is F1, factor number 2 F2, factor number 3 F3. This factor uh, here in this chart we have not specified the factor because the factors may differ from one organization to another organization. Let us assume that one of the factor is that it should be near to the raw materials. So, this is a very important factor for the organization. Let us say the second factor F2 is that there should be availability of uh, highways and transportation. And the third factor let us say is availability of skilled labor. Now, on the basis of these three factors, uh, the organization has decided that we will give them a rating. Let us say our scale is of rating is from 0 to 10. 10 means very good rating and 0 means it is very bad rating. So, if we see on this chart, let us say for site number 1, on first factor it has scored 2 out of say 10. On second factor it has scored 3 and on third factor it has scored 6. Now, there will be experts who will be rating that particular site and they will see you know what are the parameters. So, based on the parameter, so we are assuming that they have select, given them the right marks. So, the site rating you total them it becomes 11. Similarly, on second site, site number 2 that is S2 first factor, the factor is the same, but the rating here it has scored 5 marks out of 10 from uh, a scale of 0 to 10. Factor number 2, 3, factor number 3, 2. So, total comes out to 10. For site number 3, similarly for first factor, its first factor is good. So, it has scored 9 score. Factor number 2 has scored 8, factor number 3 has scored 7. So, total is 24. Site number 4 similarly has 2, 3 and 3 and so total is 8. So, now you have the highest score is 24 which is encircled on this slide. So, on based on these 3 factors uh, the site number 3 will be selected. So, this is one way to select a particular site. So, here what we had done we had given equal weightage to all the three factors. It is not that first factor is more important than second factor. We, we are saying these three factors are uh, very crucial and we are giving equal weightage to them. So, based on that we had selected this site. So, in, uh, in different books if you see these examples you will see you know you can do different kind of problems based on this equal weightage method. For in some uh, problems the factors may be as I said earlier, it may be good uh, road uh, network, in some other it may be another factor may be availability of raw material, in some it may be availability of 24 hour electricity, so on and so forth. 
So based on that, so the organization depending on what kind of organization you are running, you have to, you have to earmark, you have to shortlist the most crucial factors uh, for site selection. Now let us come to the second method. The second method is variable weight method. So in variable uh, weight method, so as the name indicates, all the factors are not given equal weightage. So the weightage is varies. For example, in this slide, we have again four uh, sites S1, S2, S3 and S4. We have again three factors F1, F2 and F3. However, the maximum point for F1 are up to 300 points. That means we are giving it more weightage. Whereas the maximum points we are giving for factor number 2 are 100 and for F3 it is 150. So therefore, uh, we are saying that first factor is most important for us. It may be say availability of let us say skilled labor is very essential. So therefore, this is for the organization to decide. So here uh, similarly for S1, S2 and S3, what uh, we have done, we have given, let us say the expert who has uh, analyzed the site, gone to the site. So given say 200 points out of 300 to site 1, 250 to site 2, 250 to site 3 and just 50 points to site 4. For factor number F2, one has to score it from 100. So respectively site 1, site 2, site 4 has got 50, 70, 80 and 100 points. And F3 site out of 150, they have got 50, just 5, 50, 10 and 40 respectively. So again, we have totaled each site's factor. So basically, it is a combination of all, all these factors, which is driving your decision. So site number 1, as we are seeing from the site, from this slide is 255, site number 2, 370, site number 3, 340. And site number 4, 190. So, the highest point is 370. So, out of this, the organization can select site 2. Here we have for the sake of convenience, we are uh, showing you 3 factors. But in actual practicality, there can be 10 factors. There can be 8 factors. There can be, uh, you know. So, here for the sake of simplicity to make the audience uh, understand it easily, we are taking three factors. So like this, you know, the scoring is done, so it becomes easy. So basically, it is a combination of the factors, so which helps you to, to decide. So it's, it is, so the decision to select a location is not just based on subjective factors. So first, we have known that these factors are important. And then we have earmarked that which factor is important for my organization. And based on that, we are giving marks to each of those factors. And sometimes, for example, in the previous slide which I just showed to you, site number S2 and S3, there is not much difference. Site 2 has got 370 and site 3 has got 340. So sometimes, yes, uh, there can be further probing, uh, there could be some other factors which may be considered. So then you may uh, the organization may select even site 3 also because there is not much difference if you know the for example the cost of the location is cheaper etc so one can uh, compromise with 30 40 points now let us try to understand the third method which is called weight come rating method so instead of you know giving different scoring that out of 300 or out of 150 or out of 200, here we have given the weightage to each factor. So it is very similar to the second method, only uh, the methodology is different over here. So for example, here again we are showing you four sites, S1, S2, S3 and S4. And there are, uh, for the sake of simpl simplicity, we are taking three factors. These three factors, again, I am repeating, they, these could be any factor depending on the adaptability to the organization. So, we are giving weightage of 5 to uh, first factor, weightage of 3 
to second factor and weightage of 2 to the third factor. That means we are giving highest weightage to first factor. So, only thing is that it is a different in methodology. So, here what we will do the expert will go to the respective slides like in the first method he will uh, give the scoring of each site on the scale from 0 to 10. Site number 1 if you see he has given the rating 2, factor 2 he has given 3, for fact, third factor he has given 6 rating. Similarly, for S2, S3, S4 some rating has been given. Now, here since the weightage of factor 1 is 5, so 5 into 2 is 10 plus 3 into 3 is 9, so 10 plus 9, 19 plus 6 into 2, 12. So, 19 plus 12 is equal to 31. So, this 31 score has come. Similarly, for site 2, the score is 5 and the weightage for factor 1 is 5. So, 5 into 5, 25 plus second factor weightage 3 into 3 plus third factor weightage 2 into 2 and when you add them, the answer will be 38. So, similarly for we have done for site 3 and site 4. So, it is quite obvious that there is a huge difference between all the uh, 3 versus this uh, S3. So, it is uh, very high 83. So, this site naturally will be selected. So, this is was the third method. So, we have seen you know many times there are so many factors which we have discussed, but you make it simple by uh, giving them scores on each of those characteristics and you decide that which characteristic is important and then you give weightage to a particular characteristic which that this is very important. So, I will just try to draw a quick analogy. Uh, suppose you want to uh, select a house, even when you select want to select a house, you want to purchase a house or you want to select a location to build your house. So, there also you can apply this same methodology. So, there are many factors to select the location for your house. For example, a family will say that the office uh, should not be very far off. Then there is another factor that the children's school should also not be very far. The office of husband and wife should not be very far. So, uh, these factors it should be near to the markets. It should be uh, you know all the other facilities should be there. Some hospital facilities should be there nearby. Other grocery shops should be there. Playground should be there it should be neat, some parks should be there. So, so many factors, so you can shortlist these factors and one can decide you know which is more important. For example, husband's office is also important, wife's office is also important, children's school is also important, college. So, everything cannot be close many times. So, somewhere you have to decide that which factor has got should be given more weightage. So, accordingly you can decide the weightages. And then you can decide, you can go to various location and give them your scorings based on your idea that about the beautification, uh, things comes, then about the space of the house, etc. also are other factors. Now, we come to another method now, the fourth method, which is known as the factor point rating method. On this slide, now uh, here we have tried to give you some example of um, we have taken any um, three factors. For example, let us say we have taken first factor as water supply. Let us say for this organization water supply is important. Second factor they have taken community facility should be there. And third factor, for example, the, um, we have taken community attitude. So, here they have drawn a scale themselves. They have drawn a scale and they have given a marks that if water supply is poor, uh, we will give the marks is, uh, of minus 15. For if it is fair, we are giving the score of minus 12. If it is adequate, we are giving score of 0. If it is good, we are giving score of 6. And if it is excellent, we are giving score of 10. So, here they have taken some scale. In community facility, 
they, um, we have taken different scales. So, you can take different scales over there. So, community facility for poor, if it is minus 3, it will be known as poor. If it is fair, it is minus 1. It is adequate. So, this scoring depends on, you know, what kind of scale this organization is taking. Similarly, for community attitude, for poor, it has taken minus 6. For fair, it has taken minus 3 and so on. Now, this is a scorecard. So, now we see this slide, factor point rating. So, again here we have taken 4 sites, S1, S2, S3 and S4. And we have taken these three factors F1, F2 and F3. So, for example, S1 site and factor 1 is adequate, it was found adequate. So, it is, you will give the score of 0 because we have taken this scorecard that if it is adequate for factor 1, we will give the score 0. So, you have given 0 over there. Similarly, S2 site, the score is minus 12. So, in this slide, if it is minus 12, it is fair. So, like this you have given the scores. So, again what one has done, one has added, site 1 the addition comes to 0, site 2 if the addition comes to minus 15, site 3 the addition comes to again 0 and site 4 it comes to minus 1. Sorry, uh, site 3 comes to 5. So, you will select, so this is the highest score among these 3, uh, these 4. So, you will select this thing. 6 plus 3, uh, I am sorry, this is 9. So, you have selected this site, site 3, because this is giving the highest score out of the 4 sites. So, this is another method called factor point rating method. Now, so I hope you would have understood these four methods, factor point rating method, weight come rating method, variable weight method, equal weight method. So, we started with equal weight method, then we talked about variable weight method, then we talked about weight come rating method and then we talked about factor point rating method. Now, we will be also talking about another method which is called break even analysis method. This method we had also discussed in our sec, um, second uh, lecture series, but since this is also part of the location analysis method, so we will discuss this uh, further. Break even analysis we know is what is a break even point? Break even point is that point wherein the total revenues of an organization are equal to the total cost. That means, this is a point, break-even analysis is a point where the organization neither makes a profit nor makes a loss. So, no loss, no profit point is known as a break-even point. So, so, the organization also wants to know that while selecting a location, at which location you know, my costs, my fixed cost, because fixed cost and variable cost depends on the location, especially fixed cost depends on the location. For example, if you have taken a shop in a mall, let us say you want to run a departmental store, you take that departmental store space in a mall or you take that departmental store in your nearby locality, there will be a huge difference of rent in a mall and in your say nearby locality. So, definitely your fixed cost has increased. So, when your fixed cost has increased, you will have to sell more in order to break even. So, break even means that in order to cover up your cost, you will have to sell more. And many times in some businesses, it is not possible to come to that sales level. So, your profit starts only after your break even point. So, therefore, break even analysis I will show you my slide right now. So, in break even analysis, you are seeing that total cost is equal to fixed cost plus variable costs into quantity. Fixed costs are the fixed cost, irrespective of the quantity you have to, uh, you have to, uh, you know, bear those costs. So, here we have written the formula that total cost TC is equal to F, which is fixed cost plus VC, VC is variable cost per unit. You have multiplied into quantity, which is Q. 
and what is revenue? That is revenue which your business has got is equal to the selling price into the quantity. So, we are writing R is equal to your selling price SP into the quantity. So, selling price per unit into the quantity of items sold. So, what is break even point? So, which is written on the slide. So, break even point is where total cost is equal to your total revenue. So, TC is equal to R or to, uh, what is TC? We have just seen in the above formula that total cost is equal to the variable cost plus VC into C plus SP into Q that is selling price per unit into quantity. So, when you solve this equation, so when you bring Q to one place, so Q is equal to uh, in this slide it is written at the bottom Q is equal to F upon SP minus VC. So, SP is selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit. So, you can know what is the break even quantity in this particular location. So, break even quantity will differ from location to location. In some locations, your fixed, fixed costs are very high. So, your break even quantity will also be very high. In certain location where the fixed costs are low, your variable, your break even quantity will be low. So, that is why we are, we study break even analysis in various subjects. We study it in marketing. So, um, now once again if you see this formula in the form of a diagram, in this uh, the, the x axis is showing you the quantity in units and the y axis is showing you the cost. So, the uh, curve which is going from 0 point, that curve shows the 0 total revenue because the total revenue when at 0 sales, your revenue is 0. So, as your sales are increasing, as your quantities increase of sales is increasing, your revenue is increasing. Then above the x axis, there is a fixed cost line, which is a horizontal line. It means that irrespective of the quantity sold, you have to incur this cost, fixed cost. So, even if you are selling 0 quantity, you have to incur this cost cost of rent, cost of basic electricity, cost of basic salaries and wages, cost of administrative expenses, you have to incur them. So, those are fixed cost. Variable cost are those costs which varies with the quantity sold. For example, packing paper, the more quantity you sell, the more packing paper you require. If you are a manufacturing unit, the more quantity you are manufacturing, the more raw materials you require. There is some electricity which is fixed and there is electricity, the more uh, products you are producing, the more electricity you are consuming. So, therefore, the point where these two lines are intersecting, that point is known as the break even quantity point. So, at this point, uh, when you draw a vertical line on the x axis, this is the break even quantity and if you are selling anything below that, it is your point of loss and if you are <coughs> selling any quantity above that, this is your point of profit. So, uh, Therefore, uh, we have seen that you know break even is uh, analysis is also very essential. So, in break even analysis, uh, we come to know that what is the basic quantity uh, you have to sell. Sometimes people select a location where their initial costs are very, very high. So, they are not even able to sell the quantity. Uh, anywhere near to the break even point. So, then they are not able to make any profits. So, today we have seen you know various factors in location selection. We have also seen some mathematical models also uh, and there are some other uh, methods which we will be uh, talking in the next series of our lectures. Uh, so, those methods which we were, we will be talking about the median model, we will be talking about the gravity model and we will be talking about the transportation model in our next series. And then in the next series, we will be also talking about the layouts. Today, we talked about how to select a location. Once you have selected the location, now you have to arrange your facilities within that location. So, what kind of layouts should be there? So, that is also very important. So, we will be discussing that in our next series. So, I hope you have got some useful knowledge out of this and we will suggest our audience to read some useful books on these topics to further enhance their knowledge. So, we will be meeting you in the next series. Thank you so much.